They say the Shiverly is dead now. Is it so? Are you ready to check if you are fit to be called the real knight? It's difficult to speak about some code of chivalry during the middle times in Europe, given that it includes several centuries at an entire continent. Generally speaking, however, in many cases, knights served private military of a local lord. That means that sometimes regional conflict set a group of armed toughs tearing through the countryside and doing whatever the heck they wanted. Codes of chivalry didn't take hold in vacuum. There was no uniform code of chivalry, and those codes that existed were often far more religious in nature than our modern concept of hold it off the ladies. They also cropped up in part to keep knights and warriors from acting on their worst impulses and attacking or exhorting weaker individuals. Starting in late 900s and lasting till 13th century, a movement called as Peace and Truce of God rose in Europe. Basically, the church imposes religion sanctions in order to halt the nobility from fighting among themselves at certain times and committing violence against local non-combatants. You can think of this as a rule for knighthood. Number 1. Don't beat up random members of clergy. 11023 of suggested by Bishop Wara of Beauvoir for King Robert the Pew gives us a good sense of some of unexpected rules warriors might be asked to adopt in response to their often violent behavior. The main idea behind the movement was to use spiritual sanctions to give people a break from all conflicts and fighting that plagued certain areas at some point during the Middle Ages. Bishop Baran Bula buried night from assaulting unarmed clerics, monks and their companions unless they are committing a crime or unless it is a recompense for a crime for which we would not make amends 15 days after my warning. Gunald of Bordeaux also condemned anyone who attacks, sees or beats a priest, deacon or any other clergyman who is not being armed, shield, sword, coat of mail or helmet but is going alone peacefully or staying in the house. Instead of formally cursing the offenders, Gunald vowed to excommunicate any attackers, unless he makes satisfaction or unless the bishop discovers that the clergyman brought it upon himself by his own fault. Number 2. Don't steal livestock or kill farm animals for no reason. The oath includes the injunction against making off with balls, goats, pigs, sheep, lambs, goats, donkeys, mares, and untamed colts. It also came out against seizing moves and horses at certain times of the year. I will not exact by extortion moves and horses, male and female, and forced pasturing in the field from the 1st of March to Old Souls Day, unless I should find them doing damage to me. However, the Bishop of Beauvoir allowed that knights could kill villagers' animals if they needed to feed themselves or their men. The Gullwald's proclamation, he also announced that any knight who robbed a poor person of a farm animal would be formally cursed. Number 3. Don't assault, rob, kidnap and torture random people. This role should have probably done without saying, but Bishop Varin Bivois felt that he needed to include it in the oath. The bishop wanted Knight to swear against mistreating male and female villagers, surgeons, merchants and pilgrims. This abuse he cited included robbery, wiping, physical attacks, extortion and kidnapping for ransom. Number 4. Don't burn down or destroy houses unless you have a good reason. Arson was a big no in the bishop's Beauvoir's oath, for the most part. Exception were made in even a knight discover an enemy horseman or thief within a certain house. Cooper writes in Holy Warriors that while wrath was a sin, vengeance is a cornerstone of chivalry ethos. The harsh repayment justly given to the diminution of precious honor. Knights were also warned against plundering and stealing from the poor even at the perfidious instigation of a local lord. 
were presided the Alans of Lille's declaration that knights achieved the highest degree of villainy by supporting themselves by looting from impoverished people. Number 5. Don't assist criminals. Wopper writes in Holy Warriors that Alan of Lille once said that knight had the cruel nature of marauders and that soldiers have been made the leaders of pillaging bands. They have become cattle thieves. Considering such borderline criminal elements, it's not surprising that Bishop Varin de Bois wanted knights to swear not to harbor and assist any notorious public robber. He allows that, if criminal comes to a knight for protection, that the knight should either make amends for the wrongdoer, force him to make amends within 15 days, or deny his protection. Number 6. Don't attack women. Unless they give you a reason. The oath includes a stipulation telling knights not to assault noble women traveling without their husbands. It's also expanded protection to those attending them, along with widows, nuns in general. However, this shield was revoked if a knight should find them committing misdeeds against him. Number 7. Don't ambush unarmed knights from land to Easter. A major part of Peace and Truth of God movement was declaring that fighting should not take place during certain parts of the year. Yale Law School's Avalon's project, featuring a 1085 decree from Emperor Henry IV, which declares the peace should be observed every Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday on Apostles' Feast Day and from 9th Sunday before Easter, until the 8th day after Pentecost among other times. In a similar vein, Bishop Varin Bois ordered medieval warriors not to attack on our knights from the beginning of Lent until the end of Easter. So, if you are, don't beat up random member of clergy, don't steal livestock or kill farm animals for no reason, don't assault, rob, kidnap and torture random people, don't burn down or destroy houses without good reason, don't assist criminals, don't attack women without a reason, and don't ambush an armed knights from land to Easter, then congratulations, you are the real exemplary knight. Hi, off you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. That's easy! Hey, chivalry is not dead after all. What do you think? Well, that's it for today. Like it if you do, subscribe if you don't want to miss more. Thank you very much. Bye bye.